video is about the market failure caused by an absence of property rights and how in some circumstances pollution permits can be used to address this. So property rights are quite simply about allocating who owns what and so they're used to manage this ownership of economic resources and it's actually really really crucial in ensuring that these resources are allocated in the most efficient way. And that's because without property rights, you'd be very likely to get this problem of the tragedy of the commons, which is where resources without clearly assigned property rights get over consumed. So if we take fishing as an example, we might have large areas of sea where it's very difficult to police who owns the water and the fish in it. And so each fishing boat will very rationally try and catch as much as they possibly can before the others take all of the fish for themselves. And so stocks will be depleted and nobody can catch any fish in the future. And this is really linked to the free rider problem as well, because you've got every individual here is acting perfectly rationally. But the outcome is going to be damaging to social welfare. And so one way you could try and resolve this is by extending property rights. So it doesn't actually matter who owns the resource, but just the process of ownership will change the incentives in that situation because the owner will now try to use that resource sustainably to protect those stocks for the future. And this is really the thinking behind tradable pollution permits, which give firms the legal right to a certain level of pollution which they can then buy and sell. So what you're effectively doing here is allocating property rights to clean air. And not only does that make a maximum limit for pollution, but it can also incentivize low level polluters to reduce their emissions further as well as they've got, they've got that incentive to sell the permits and gain the benefit of doing this. And so as part of the scheme, the quantity of the permits can be reduced over time to bring down the overall level of emissions. And you can see this on the diagram where we've got the supply of permits at a fixed level. So that's why the supply curve is a vertical line. And then over time, you can reduce that supply of permits. So pushing that further to the left, which will force up the price of the remaining permits and reduce the total pollution, but also further incentivize those firms to bring down their emissions because they can sell their permits then at a higher price. Now there are a few problems with using schemes like this. So there's the problem with measuring levels of pollution for individual firms, which is very, very difficult. And then there's the cost of enforcing the limits as well. And you've also got the problem of global cooperation, which is really required if it's going to be successful. And this is always really the issue with any policy that's trying to tackle pollution is that each country will be looking over their shoulder at what others are doing. And so any restrictions that you put in place like this, if they're on a national scale, countries are going to be reluctant to implement them because it will hit their competitiveness. And so that's why schemes like the EU cap and trade scheme or even global agreements become really, really important.